Yeah, but you know what plan B should be, Hajj? Mm. What we done last season. <laughs> not what for, not no diamond blood. Play the double pivot with Ericsson and Casemiro that was giving us joy last season, bro. That's what you do. You don't try and play a new formation that these men don't mm. know and as a plan B, blood. Like, that's crazy to me. How can all the players be bad every game? That doesn't make sense. Bro, you, you do bear in mind, like, we are literally playing players that he hasn't signed and asking them to do a job that they don't have the skill set for. That's why I asked the Well question. then, well then, well then, but why ask players that you haven't signed oh. to do a job that they don't have the skill set for? Your job as a manager is to mm -hmm. find a way of getting the best out of the players you have. That's literally your job. That's literally your job. Literally. Okay, is is that is that not what he done against Arsenal? Because the thing is, if you look at the way we played against Tottenham, we pressed high up the field. He realised going to the Emirates with Ericsson, I can't do that. So he decided to sit back. So did he not play to the players' strengths, but they decided to stink out the joint? No. Tactically, set up right against Arsenal. To me, to me, I don't think that had anything to do with the players' strengths. I think that no matter what team we've got, we can't go and press Arsenal like that at the Emirates, period. I don't think mm -hmm. he'd done that because of the players. I think he'd done that because of Arsenal. He'd done that out of respect for Arsenal. And actually, he did the right thing. I thought we set up really well against Arsenal. We did the right thing. We didn't press. Mm -hmm. And also, they didn't press us because they knew that we wanted us. We wanted them to press us. And the time that they did press us, we got in behind and scored. Do you know what I'm saying? So it was a very tactical battle between the two managers. Very tactical. But I don't think he made that decision based on our players. He made that decision based on Arsenal. Yeah, but bro, like, sure, surely you take into consideration the players that you have. Like, fair of enough, course, yeah, it's Of course Arsenal. you do. Of course you do. But ultimately, he set up that way against Arsenal. He wouldn't set up that way every single game. This is the point. It was more to do with Arsenal. It wasn't to do with the players that we had. It wasn't to do with that. That's the point. As Man United, yeah, most games, most games as a Manchester United team, you have to set up your team to play their own football. Similar to what Angie's doing at Tottenham, yeah? P same with Liverpool as well, yeah? People say they can only play one way, but cool. Do you know what I mean? That's fine. Like, set up your team to play a certain way, bro. Like, properly. Since he's been here, he ain't set up Man United to play no way, blood. We still don't know what football team we are. We're in his second season. We don't know what we're doing. We don't know what we do. We don't know what we don't do. We don't know anything, bruv. Like, what what kind of team are we? Like, we don't know. Like, people could talk about Brighton and all these things. Brighton had about six, seven man missing, yeah? And they still popped us off the park, bro. On paper, their team's not not better than us. They had Danny Welbeck up front. We had Rashford and Hoyland. Mm -hmm. Their team cost 16 million. So, it's one of them ones where it's not nothing to do with fit squad and all these other things. We have no identity, bro. Like, we actually have no identity, bro, after all this time, bro. Like, this manager don't seem to know what he wants to do, bruv. So you can say he doesn't have the players, but he's spent enough money and he signed enough players. When man is saying players are injured, you still have to coach the players that are there. Bro, the players that are there clearly showed last year they weren't good enough. That there's a reason why he upgraded on them. Like, the thing is, it's been five games, and the thing is... You, like, because I've, I've been seeing it in the past. It's not two five days. games, Everybody... bruv. Preseason counts as well, you know. Bro, bro, let's be real. Like, let, let's no, be it real, counts. Yeah. It counts because you still need to me see a template. About pre -season. Yeah, bro. Preseason to me is just fitness. I'll be no, honest. Bro. It's like, not though. It's no. It's no. It's shape as well. It's not just fitness, bro. It's shape as well because mm. at the end of the day, yeah, everything that you, every single match you play, yeah, you have to take what you've learned in the training ground onto the field you have mm -hmm. to preseason isn't just fitness even as a coach myself yeah the results don't matter in preseason but the performance matters i want to see what i've done on the training ground yeah on the pitch that's what i want to see in preseason if i see that and we lose that's okay do you know what i mean because it means that yo like you're actually picking up what i'm trying to show you the result don't matter i need to see this translate to that Man United, when you watch them in pre-season, you couldn't see anything that we were working on. Not really. Do you know what I mean? Like, we beat Arsenal because we were up for that game. Other than that, it, it was much to do with nothing, bro. You know you know yeah. what it is? It's like, pre-season for me is fitness. I agree partially. That like, yeah, fair enough. 
try a system. Bro, at the end of the day, preseason is an opportunity for you to trial and error, try a different formation, try a player in a different in, in a different position. Because at the end of the day, win, lose, or draw, nobody cares. Yeah, and, and, and it says a lot. The fact that what Man United are playing Dortmund with their C team and then bringing on the A team for like what 15 minutes? Like, I'll be real. Another good example can be Tottenham. What do people think Tottenham were playing this board in preseason? But all the all the preseason, everybody was screaming, "Yo, Harry Kane don't have the legs to press." Hmm. Richarlison is looking better at number nine than Harry Kane. Like but Tottenham were balling even when they were losing, bro. Like when Tottenham lost to West Ham, I had Tottenham fans saying, "Yo, this is the best football mm -hmm. we've seen in X amount of years, bro." Like I like what the manager's doing, even when they lost, and that's proof that they had something to buy into. Like Spurs lost know. to Barca, and certain men were saying they were the better team. Cool, but bro, at the end of, at the end of the day, yeah, like, that's like what one game, bro. Preseason doesn't mean that much. It really doesn't. Like, bro, I literally just had a preseason camp. It, like, it doesn't it doesn't mean much. It's not as important as you're trying to make seem. It's fitness. That's what it is. When the season starts, that's when it matters. That's why, funny enough, sometimes you see players performing preseason, but when the season starts, they shit they shit the bed. Like, it doesn't it doesn't really mean much. No, no, of course, but that's that's the difference in personalities and pressure bro that's not the difference that doesn't mean yeah that preseason doesn't matter preseason is literally is the dress rehearsal it's the dress rehearsal for the main show the main show is the season mm. and in the dress rehearsal before the dress rehearsal you still need to learn your lines you still need to get everything right in the dress rehearsal cool if you make a mistake it's all right but you still need to know the majority of your lines bro do you know what I'm saying? Before you do the main show. That's what preseason is for. It means it's okay if you make a mistake, but the template has to be there. I didn't see nothing in preseason yeah, that made me confident for this season. Nothing at all, bro. Nothing. A man can't say that 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 ain't got nothing to do with the manager because yeah, you could say, cool, he brought in players to play that system and they're not here, but you still need to coach the players that are here. Like, Casemiro can't just become bad and Lissandro just become bad overnight. Like, that's not possible. Like, we wouldn't have done nothing last season without them. So if they're not comfortable, there has to be something bigger going on. Bro, the, the thing is, is that when it comes to those two, when they're losing 1v1 duels, I ain't blaming no system. When Casemiro is flying into challenges, I ain't blaming no system, bro. That's That's the thing. Like, fair, I'll be real. One part of me even sympathizes with Casemiro, like a quarter of me, because I'm like, you know what? Yeah, like I actually think, like my biggest issue with, with Ten Hag is about the way we press. But I can't really explain that unless I've got like a piece of paper and a pen. But at the end of the day, bro, I've watched these man five games. And the funny thing is I've probably watched every single game twice. Them man individually have been trash. And the thing is, I can guarantee you they will both get better once we once we take out some of these duds and we bring in the players that he signed and that's when I'll sit down and judge this manager because then I'll be like you know what cool now you've got player A that you signed for this position now you've got player B that you signed for this position now you've put them all on paper now you've all put them on the pitch now I'll sit down and judge you I'm not going to sit down and judge a guy 5 games into the season when he's resorting to Ericsson, when he's resorting to McTominay when he's in a dilemma man 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 United's two marquee wingers are not here we're literally relying on what Garnacho against Bayern Munich, maybe even Pelistri. Who, 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 like, oh. who, who are the duds? Someone said in the chat, who are the duds for you? That if they come out the team, yeah, then then things are going to get better. I wouldn't play Ericsson. I wouldn't play McTominay. I'll be real. Wan We've needed Dado, Ericsson, bro. Sorry? We've needed Ericsson, bro. Like when Ericsson wasn't playing, we looked what? Bro, Ericsson has come into the team. And Casemiro you know Mount is? Bruno was horrific, bro. Yeah, but do you, do you know what it is? It's like Ericsson has come into the team and we've still been battered off the park. Like at the beginning of the season, Mount held the blame. Oh, the reason why Casemiro has been trashed is because of Mount. Bro, after the two games, Casemiro was coming for the last three. I mean, sorry, Ericsson's coming for the last three. He's Ericsson's been part of the team that lost to Brighton. He's been part of the team that lost to Arsenal. He's been part of the team that stank it out against Forrest. So it's like at the beginning, Mount was the scapegoat. Now it's what Ericsson's being good, bro. Did you watch Ericsson against Brighton? Did you watch him jogging in the first five minutes, bro? Again, what did I say? Like we played a diamond with Ericsson on the left side of the diamond for what, bruv? Like Ericsson is a ten, bruv. 
We know he's not got legs. Why are you playing a formation where your two <clears throat> wide people in the diamonds have to come out here yeah, and defend when you know Ericsson ain't got legs, bro? Like, like, bro, the manager chose to play him there. Why not play Ericsson in a 10 where he needs to play? Bro, okay, I'm not going to lie. The diamond is a formation that he played at Utrecht. So the thing is, I don't really agree with the whole, like, oh, if Anthony was available. I personally don't know. But he yeah, hasn't like, coached it at Man United. It doesn't matter if he's coached it at, at, at Utrecht. Doesn't no, matter. but I'm saying it's a formation that he's familiar with. It's a formation that he's had some joy with. So maybe he looked at it and he was like, you know what? Let me try. Yo, it hasn't been working the past two games. The way I want to play, let me change it up. Because the thing is, when it comes to managers, yeah, like in the past, managers have been criticised where they've stuck to a formation and it's not working. And that's when everybody comes out and says, brah, like you've got no plan B. As soon as this manager tries a plan B and yeah, it fails... Everyone is now cooking him. Oh, why didn't you just stick to plan A? Plan A that clearly wasn't working because we don't have the players for it because all of them are injured. Yeah, but you know what plan B should be, Hajj? Mm. What we done last season. <laughs> not what, for, not no diamond blood. Play the double pivot with Ericsson and Casemiro that was giving us joy last season, bro. That's what you do. You don't try and play a new formation that these men don't mm. know and as a plan B blood. Like, that's crazy to me. Like, do you know what I mean? If they're not even getting the three one six year that you're trying to do, introduce an, another new formation when you could just go back to what we done last season, to me, that don't make no sense because the players will always be more important than the manager. As a coach, you have to think, what are my players comfortable with doing? Not what I'm comfortable with because I coached it somewhere else. It's about the players, bro. My problem is... The manager is too egotistical, bruv. It's too much about him. You have to think about the players, bro. You have to think about the players. Like, as a manager, yeah, your players ultimately are the guys that are going to keep you in a job and the guys that are going to make you lose a job. Like, literally, bro. Like, you can have an ego, but at the same time, you have to be without ego as a coach. You have to be, because you have to understand that the players always come first. Even if you have a way of playing, you have to understand if you can't get the players to buy into your way of playing, what you know is pointless. What you know is pointless. It's about what you can get them to understand and what you can get them to um, to get them to carry out. Ten Hag's biggest thing as well. Every time we lose a game, oh yeah, we played well. No, we didn't, bruv. Eh, bruv, I'm tired of us losing games and the manager saying we played well, fam. I'm actually tired of it. Like, bro, it's like, bro, remember when Oli was smiling when we'd lose? It reminds me of that. Remember when we'd lose and Oli would smile? A man would say, yo, this guy's not serious. This is what Ten Hag is doing, bro. We're losing games comprehensively. We had a good 15 minutes against Brighton and he came out saying, oh, we played well. What? No, we didn't, bruv. I don't remember the Brighton keeper really making any saves, blood. A man said that we played well. We got smoked, bruv. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's crazy to me. Like, I just don't understand what he's doing. I'll be real. Like, for me, plan B should be go back to Casemiro and Ericsson in the pivot and Bruno, what you did last season. Go back to that. All right, cool. Anthony's not available. Cool. Play Hoyland, Rashford and Garnacho, and just do the same formation we done last season, bro. Give Lissandro some protection with a double pivot in front of him. Ericsson don't have to run as much. Remember, Man United's average, average positions last season were one of the deepest in the league. We played quite deep and quite compact. Go back to that, because we're leaking goals. Why not just go back to that, Hajj, instead of going into some fake diamond, bruv? <laughs> bro, it's, bro it's, it's crazy. You know what it is? You said go back to basics. He literally went back to basics against Arsenal. He went back to basics against Arsenal and it didn't work. Bro, the like, Arsenal bro, performance was actually the one performance that he can actually take some credit from. In, I, in I wouldn't say that way? it didn't work. I wouldn't say that it didn't work against Arsenal, bro. Like, Arsenal scored in, like, like, 10 minutes of added time, bro. Like, mm. in the 90 minutes, Man United done enough to get a draw, blood. Like, do you know what I mean? So, bro, that's the only performance he gets some credit for, blood. I think he set up well against Arsenal, bro. That's it. It doesn't matter. We lost, but he can take some encouragement from that performance. That's the only one. No other performance you can take encouragement from. The Tottenham one, you can't. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, you can't take no encouragement from Brighton. You can't take none from Wolves. We were 2-0 down at Forest. Do you know what I mean? Like, bro, like, bro, the Arsenal one is the only one you can look at. Exactly. The Arsenal performance is better than Tottenham. That's the only performance you can look at yeah. and say, you know what? There were some pro pro there were some promising things in there. Tottenham bro, performance bro. was dead, bro. It was dead, bro. We pressed you know them, yeah? 
We yeah. pressed these guys, yeah. We pressed we pressed Tottenham well for like 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Do you know what I'm saying? And then that's all it was. Yes, we had chances. We mm. did. We should have taken them. But how many times do we say that with Rashford? Oh, he should have passed it or should have done that. Bro, Rashford gives us that. The manager's adamant that Rashford's the guy. So that's another that's another hill that he's gonna have to die on, bro. It's another hill he's gonna have to die on. Do you understand? Like Tottenham, also, yeah, like I said. Tottenham play one way, innit? And Tottenham are a team that are doing really well at the moment. But if you set up well against Tottenham, you can get at these guys, innit? You can. Do you know what I mean? Tottenham are not better than Arsenal. They're not. Do you know what I mean? However, however, that Tottenham performance and the Arsenal performance, completely different performances. The Tottenham one we pressed, and some people say, oh, we gassed out. And then the Arsenal one we didn't press, but I thought that we controlled the ball very well when we played out and we weren't losing the ball in silly areas and we were looking for that vertical ball in behind to Rashford, which we did a few times. He scored from one and there was another couple of times where he could have put Hoyland in and he didn't. Two completely tactical different games. But the Arsenal game felt safer to me. The Tottenham game felt like we were going to concede every time we didn't have the ball, but it felt like we could score. The Arsenal game, we felt a lot more secure defensively. And that's why I say that the Arsenal performance was better because it was more controlled. The Tottenham game was like a basketball game. That's what it was. Wouldn't you agree? We are a lot more open against Spurs. But the thing is, is that in the first half, we were a bit more open, but that resulted in us creating more chances. Against Arsenal, we weren't open. And I, I disagree with the whole Arsenal being... A, for me, Arsenal's been the shittest performance this season. You do know against Arsenal, yeah, because everybody's trying to like now paint this narrative that we were good against Arsenal. Y you mentioned control. Bro, man don't care about control in the first phase. I had Licha and, and, and Casemiro and Lindelof doing rondos in the centre of the pitch with no intentions of passing the ball forwards. You know, Man United, 75% of our possession was in the first phase. If it was in the second and third phase, I'll be like, you know what, fair enough. Like We dominated the ball in dangerous areas. Bro, that was the game plan, though. That was the game plan, and we saw it with the Rashford how, goal. How, how do you win a game with that game plan? Because we didn't win. Bro, we didn't win a Tottenham game either. But like I said, yeah, when you look, yeah, when you look at the first phase against Arsenal and you could see, yeah, you could clearly see that what Man United were trying to do was they were trying to bring Arsenal up the field and they were trying to turn them around quickly with a vertical pass. And that's exactly how we scored. Ericsson cut the ball out, boom, into Rashford. And we done it multiple times with Anana going straight into that wing with other players going into that wing and we got in behind Arsenal that way 